The goal of this podcast is to help you break in and thrive in advertising. And we do that every single week by sharing the stories and advice of those rocking it on the other side. Lions. We mention lions quite a bit on this show. To win a lion, a Grand Prix, a gold, silver, or bronze. Lions, lions, lions. But today, we talk with Steve Latham, the head of learning for one of the most prestigious award shows in all of advertising, the Cannes Lions International Festival of Creativity. Every year in June, Cannes Lions brings the creative community together for a week in Cannes, France, to learn, network, explore, and celebrate creativity in advertising and communication. The festival is where the world's greatest creativity gets its moment in the spotlight. It's where groundbreaking work from across the globe is awarded and where today's most influential thought leaders and industry titans come together on stage. So, why does this matter to you, the aspiring advertiser? Well, you should study can winning work as it represents the highest standards of creativity and innovation in advertising. This will give you the insights into what makes campaigns successful and how to effectively connect with audiences. And in this episode, Steve will teach you some ways to do that. Why? Well, Steve has been the head of learning at the Cannes International Festival of Creativity since 2011. He's based in London. He leads the talent and training team, making him a perfect guest. Also, he oversees the Can Lions School, focusing on training and educating professionals in creativity, marketing, strategy, and innovation at various career stages. This could be you. Steve's role involves strategic planning for the school and enhancing the employee culture at Lions, concentrating on career development, training, onboarding, and brand strategy, and community building. Boom, boom, boom. And most importantly, Steve talks about an initiative Can has with AKQA, a great agency. That's AKQA. It's something you're certainly going to want to learn about that might actually get you to France in June for free. Steve's a great guest. I can't wait for you to listen. You're going to want to connect with him. Uh, Steve Latham, you can connect with him on LinkedIn. He's more than happy to talk with you. And if you need a nudge, you give this podcast five stars on Apple Podcasts and then reach out to me. I will try and connect you personally. Now on with the show. This is the Breaking and Entering Advertising Podcast. And as a usual, ooh, I'm your accomplice, Gino Schellenberger. Kick it, Mikey. <laughs> All right, Steve Latham, welcome to the Breaking and Entering Advertising Podcast. How the heck are you doing today, sir? I am very good. It's a little cold here in London, but I'm looking forward to this chat to warm me up. London, never been. Want to go. Birthplace of, birthplace of strategy, I believe, in advertising. I don't know if that's true or not, but I've heard that, and we're going to run with it. Let's do it. So what are we going to talk about today, Steve? I'm excited. You are the head of learning at Can Lion International Festival of Creativity. Did I say can correctly? Is you that did. right? Can thank, we... thank the Lord we can continue. I've heard some horrendous pronunciation. So, What um, have you heard? What's the wrong way to pronounce it? Can, I hate. Can is a town in France, in northern France. And then can. I mean, Cans. you know. It's can. It's just a, a tin of beans, a can of beans. That's all I always think about. Can of beans. Oh, with my go. Chicago accent, it works perfectly with the egg pronunciation. It does. Um, but so yeah, I, I have, uh, I always tell people I've probably got the best job at Can Lions, right? Head of learning. It means, and it's purely uh, customer focused. So it is about helping our delegates, um, whether they be young delegates, young lions, as we call them or CMOs or other business leaders. It's about creating opportunities. It's about building confidence. It's about creating experiences that, that, that develop skills, that, that build networks. One of the most valuable things about Lions is its networking ability 
um, its ability to connect people and those people to stay in touch. We have jewelry groups who are still in touch 10 years later on their WhatsApp groups. I'm in the WhatsApp oh. groups, our academies, and they, every other day, they are checking in, they are sharing, they are celebrating, commiserating, and having your personal network outside of your workplace is one of the most important things I think oh, yeah. um, anyone can develop. And, you know, when you, when you think about what advice would you give to your younger self, I would definitely tell myself to have built my personal network much quicker and, and, and um, can, can, can help you do that. Ooh, I like that. We're already getting into some good advice here. I want to back it up though, Steve. Uh, I talk about can probably every single episode in some way, shape, or form. It's the one I go to. It's the one that uh, is just account fo side folks, strategy folks. I'm talking about, I'm talking about if they got gold, silver, Grand Prix. I bring it up so often. So can you clarify to somebody that is new to this industry or they're thinking about breaking in, what is a lion? And why do people want to win it so bad? And where, what is this can that we always talk about? It's a great question. The best way I think to think about it is if you are in the business of film, you want to win an Oscar because everybody knows the Oscar is the thing that you want to win. It's the, it's the most celebrated award in that industry. If you're into music, you want to win a Grammy. If you are in the business of creative communications, um, with respect to all the other awards and programs out there. And, and, and I truly mean that the lion represents the benchmark for excellence globally. It is the one that people do want to win. And it's the one that genuinely has currency for, for people and for businesses. And what I mean by that is if you win a lion and, and winning a lion, by the way, can even, can be a short list, bronze, silver, or gold, as you say, Grand Prix. But winning a lion um, gets gets you notoriety. It gets you it, it gets on you get on people's radars, and yeah. being on people's radars means that they may want to hire you. So then you have your conversation with your company of, hey, I'm in demand. You know, um, I'm good at what I'm doing because Lions has recognized me, and the Lions jury has recognized my work and the team's work. I don't want to leave, but I want to be, I want to be fairly compensated. I want to be recognized, et cetera. So it has a, it has a currency for, for the individual, but also for the business. If you're an agency that's winning lions yep. and legitimately got reason to be in a room at the next global pitch of a major business or a local business. And why are you in that room? Well, because you're winning lions. So. It really is a benchmark for, for creative excellence. And I think for that reason, um, is why it's mentioned in most of your podcasts, if not all of them, because it's the one everybody wants to be a part of. And if you're associated with lions, whether as a winner, as a delegate, people are interested because not a lot right. of people get to go and not a lot of people win that the, the stats on who actually wins a lion, it's a tiny percent. So they are. I won't say the best of the best, but they are right up there as, as, as masters of their craft. Do you know who's got the most lines? Oh, and like, good question. is there Probably. like a goat? Is it like a Mike Jordan? I, that's a great question. I probably would say David Droger, um, who was a Dro Droger five is his agency. He now, say it, say it again, there was an internet, there was an internet blip there. So who's the goat of. Right now, do you think in top of mind it, it, for for Can Lions the the Michael the Michael Jordan of Can Lions? I would probably say is David Droger. Um, wow, he's can you connect me with him? I've been trying to get him on. He's oh, he's incredible. Um, really nice guy in Aussie, um, and has his own business. Uh, he's now part of he leads Accenture Song. Oh yeah, which is a massive network, and so. Um, and if you look at the work he's done over the years, it, it's groundbreaking work. Mm -hmm. So David Droga, top of mind. And, and there's so many that, that are consistently winning. Um, I, think, I think we bring this up and there's so much to dive into. 
um, it's the bar, right? It's, it's exactly where it's creative excellence at its finest. And it's good for the business of an agency to get in the door with new clients. As a PR professional and a marketing for an agency, I want to say that we won 50 lines, right? You know, it's not easy to do. It's really hard uh, for a reason. And it's good for individual growth. Buchin, he's our creative lead on this podcast. I went to school with him. He's young. He's my age and, uh, you know, barely three, four years in the industry. Shortlisted at Lion, and he was at Gut and got a job at Translation, uh, pay raise, whatever. You know, that opportunity, I can't say it was fully from, it was networking, but the shortlist itself at that young of an age really put him on, on, on the map. So I've seen it personally just in my short career help somebody that's very close to me. So, yeah, it, it is true. So, Steve, I think, like, I want to understand – um, I guess more so about your specific role and how it could help our listeners. Are there resources that you oversee that, you know, uh, that people can go to can because it's not cheap and it's far away for, you know, if you're in Chicagoland area, I guess, what are those things that you're offering for specifically the aspiring category or entry level category? Yeah. So the entry level the new generation of the industry are the ones that will be on the stages in the future, right? So they're, they're truly important to us. Um, there is an entry point, I believe, for every level of creative, marketer, digital practitioner out there. And with, li and with students especially, it starts with Future Lions, our partnership with AKQA. It's a free competition that you can enter. It's a live brief from a client. And um, the winning teams um, or the winners, they can come to Cannes um, as part of their prize. So many, oh. univers many universities, we got someone's birthday. Hold on. Happy birthday. <laughs> how, old, how old is Cannes? Cannes is 71 next year. We just celebrated our 70th birthday this year. Our 70th Happy birthday. birthday. Thank Happy you so birthday. much. How old are you? No, don't answer that. Um, so this, this creative competition, it's through AKQA, another great agency. Didn't they change their name? To, they haven't great. changed their name. I don't think they've changed their name, but they are brilliant. All right? And they are um, sending that digital space. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. winning, winning can every year. And I think so that is an opportunity to, to enter as, as yourself. If your school is not participating in it, then knock on the bloody door of the professor and say, hey, we should be entering this, right? Because... Um, and the current school of the year is based down in Argentina. So um, any school has the opportunity to win this. It just, you just really need to, what, what you've got to learn, I think, about breaking into advertising, in fact, into any industry, right, and any job is nothing just comes to you in life, right? You do no. learn as you get older, right? You've really got to um, knock on the door repeatedly. And you've also got to handle rejection and you've got to be resilient. I mean, you talk to any creative leader in the business, especially, they will tell you resilience is, mm -hmm. is super important. How do you, it, it's a strange industry where probably 95% of the time you're told your ideas and work isn't good enough mm -hmm. and you've got to keep coming back, right? So it is a tough industry, but it's incredibly brilliant one to be part of as well. And, and so, that, yeah. I love that. And one of the first couple of weeks I was at my job at Havas, Chicago, Myra Nussbaum, the president, she, she mentioned to me, I'm paraphrasing, she was basically saying, nobody cares as much uh, about your own career trajectory as you. So you need to be your own advocate. And what, what you said there, and I think connecting the dots, so this competition, what is it called? One more time for the listeners. It's Future Lions. So Future Lions. Futurelions.com. Um, the brief gets launched in January. It's open oh. through, through the spring, so it's perfect timing, um, no cost to enter. So, so yeah, so find, find out about it and, and get involved. What's, no. what's going to stop you? All that's going to stop you is probably the next person that's going to get hired in the job you maybe want, right? So think about it that yeah. way. So it's free to enter. And what I was trying to say is like, if your school is not participating in it, you need to be an advocate and bring it up to the professor. 
So it's free to enter for students. Is that correct? Correct. Exactly. And it's one creative brief or is it yep. like a full media plan? No, like no, it's big... one, one creative brief. One creative and brief. then, and then it's opens in January through the spring. And then the winners, how many winners get selected from that? Um, good question. I think Handful. probably we do five to 10 come to the festival every year. So um... and that's paid for if you win it roughly five to 10, we're, we'll, if there's any edits there, we can no, make don't, those. Don't, don't hold it. Yeah. Gone to my head that those we'll say a very friends. select few, you know, the best of the best of the oh my same God, yeah. brief. Absolutely. The same brief, uh, students across the world are all entering it. So I'm sure you get a good amount. And then who's judging that? AKQA, the, the AKQA put together a panel, yeah, exactly. And um yeah. and together with the client as well. So um we've had Lego, for example, um I think nice. So, so it's a great port it's a great portfolio building piece too, even if you don't win. And you, you you do your best and you come short, you don't go to the festival, you still have a, hopefully a great piece of work. That's what we try to do with our, our crowbar awards on a smaller level. I get worried that students don't have the necessary briefs uh, uh, to get them into, to break in the industry. So we do a quarterly brief, um, just quick hits with a guest judge. They come on the podcast as well called the crowbar awards. Maybe there's something that we can talk about later about um, partnering, but. I love that you guys are doing that to get them in the door. <clears throat> Any briefs other are lifeblood, brief, briefs are the lifeblood of the industry, yeah. right? So, um, yeah. and I don't see that changing anytime soon. So the more no. practice, it's, creativity is like a muscle, right? The more you use it, the better it gets. So work on briefs whenever mm. you have the opportunity to. Um, so yeah, you can enter that individually. You can try and persuade your school to get involved, but there's no barrier to entry on that one. Yeah. Um, just, we welcome... We welcome nearly 250 students to Can Lions every year. And a lot of those do come from the US through study abroad programs. Not something that's very big here in Europe culturally, but we know that's a massive part of the summer season in the state. So uh, BYU, University of Florida, Miami, Arizona, Georgia. Yeah. Georgia sends 60 students to Can every year. And they the come from three weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They come for three weeks, a week to prep, a week of the festival, and then a week to debrief. Um, yeah, they've, been, they've been coming for over 10 years now. So, and they get full access to the festival. We regard students um, just as uh, highly as, as, a, as, a, as a gold pass member. They get full access to all of the talks, all of the award shows, the closing party, which is outside the iconic um, Carlton Hotel, beautiful event. Um, and also when they're there, we have a wonderful partnership with Travas and they, in their Havas Cafe, they welcome the students on a Tuesday afternoon. They organize some content for them and they really light up their eyes that this is an industry that they truly do want to work in. And when you're in Cannes, in the south of France, seeing the personality, seeing the work, you're just like, God damn, this is, this is where I want to be. And, um. But it takes work to get in there, right? It's not, nothing's ever easy in life. Shout out to Voss. Heck yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, we love Jocelyn, them. my team's going to love that. Dan Shazier Lucy. As well. Shazia, I love Shazia as well. Shazia she Khan. is incredible, yeah. And, um, and, and every year they're like, Steve, we want them there, right? We want to we wanna give up our space, which costs a small fortune, but yep. we want to welcome the next generation of the industry. So, you know, I think that's, Kudos to the business for having the, the kind of values and purpose to, to, to do that. I heard a rumor that Dan Lucy, the chief creative officer, now co-CEO of Havas New York, during that event that Havas put on in their cafe, offered, basically, if somebody got a question right, a pretty much locked-in internship on the spot. Well, there you go. You see, oh, life, I saw Sir John Hegarty, who is... Um, industry titan and for oh, any yeah. students who may not have heard about him, check out his work right i saw sir john speak once and he said choose opportunity over money never chase the money because opportunity yeah. will lead you everywhere so yeah if you manage to get yourself the can and you're in that room when dan is offering an internship who knows it could just be you i love that no that's a really good reminder I think, especially with the pay rates, uh, when you first start in this industry, super low, transparently speaking, like you're not going to be making a lot, most likely your first year, maybe even two years, but if you win a can or you get shortlisted, 
or you win those briefs at the very at, at, uh, with the Young Lions or a crowbar award or whatever it might be, uh, that's capital. That's leverage to negotiate a higher salary. Uh, I love that. So thanks for bringing that up. Anything else, um, things that top of mind uh, that you kind of do off year? Because this can is in what month again? Uh, we're in June, the third week of June. Third week of June. We got to start planning for that already. <laughs> uh, outside of June then, what else can uh, people get involved with uh, with the CAN program? We, um, <laughs> I, I think if you're, well, it's, it's a little harder in the States. If you're in Europe, we have mm -hmm. Eurobest Young Creative Competition, uh, which is an online competition, but it doesn't really cost that too too much money. We've got a, a regional event in Dubai. We have a regional event in Singapore, which serves both of those regions. We have young creative competitions as part of those. Now, for us, a young creative competition, the Young Lion competition, which happen at Cannes and are like the Olympics of advertising, they are for professionals already working in the industry, aged mm -hmm. 30 years or under. So, um, but as students, um, you know, there are opportunities. Um, I mean, what I would say is I was thinking about, you know, how do you break into this incredibly tough industry, right? Going back to that earlier point, that no one's going to just knock on your door and go, hey, Mary, would you come and work for our incredible, brilliant agency, right? Um, okay. But there are things that, that we can do. And I always say to students, you know, you've got to think about yourself as a brand, okay? Yes. Think about yourself as a brand. And, and, and so when somebody leaves the room, having met you, what do you want them to think about you? And if you think about yourself as a brand, you can think about yourself as a project. And, and you a brand for you, yourself. Yeah, exactly. Why not? Exactly. So, you know, you need your portfolio because that is ultimately still one of the biggest um, routes into the industry, having a great portfolio. But always remember that your por portfolio will never should never be finished. It's always a work in progress, right? Right. Um, and also your portfolio needs to reflect, not just say print, it's got to reflect all facets of the marketing industry, right? right. So obviously digital um, is everywhere now, right? Of course it is. And you, can, and you can probably see if you go to the ad schools and see the recent grads there, the winners, you stock the winners of Young Lions and the Crowbar Awards and all these other award shows. Um, you can get a pretty good uh, context and what the benchmark is. You see that they have six campaigns fleshed out with uh, different types of brands that are well-known. Um, and they have different mediums outside of print. Like you said, they have case studies. They have uh, out of home. They have social TikTok trends, whatever else might be in those extensions. So it's not just three print ads, right? Which maybe back in the 90s was all that was needed. But now exactly. it's so freaking hard. And then also the whole package of the website, once the campaigns are done, you have to do your about me section. You have to make it flow nicely, look nice. I say hire somebody if you're a copywriter to, to find a partner, but I don't yeah. know, I can talk but then, about you know, Exactly. So, you know, and, and then if you have the opportunity to go to a portfolio night or something like that, or an event at an agency, go. And don't just tune in when they're talking about you the 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 reason these things are brilliant is if you are sat at a table with a creative director and she is critiquing someone else's book listen to what she's saying about that other student's book right because you'll hear some you'll look at someone else's work and go i like that i don't like that i don't understand it listen to what this creative director she might be saying and then it's like wow i didn't see that insight and that's the great thing about this industry right is is you've got to find the insight. You've got to find, um, we all see something different when we look at something. So listening to what someone else says about someone else is as valuable really as, as the commentary and feedback she might give you about, oh. about your own portfolio. I've never um, heard that advice on this show. In, yeah, two, oh. in four years, it's good to listen when somebody else is getting critiqued or analysis on their portfolio. I never even thought about that. I've always <laughs> thought about the individual one-on-one -on -one going back and forth about their work. But yeah, that makes, that's novel. And I, I think with age, that's perfect. With age comes occasional wisdom, Gino. So you you've got, got I've got many years, I got many years on you. So you'll, you'll be there. Don't mind. Oh, I guess the other thing is, um, I mean, 
obviously like LinkedIn, right? Which maybe a few years ago seemed to be the, the, I'll, I'll say the most, maybe the more boring of the social media platform. My gosh, it is alive now, you know, and post can, I, we have thousands of, of, of referrals about just the learning programs that people have gone through of the shout outs, the thank yous. And LinkedIn for me is, is just now a wonderful place. And also it is where people get hired. And you've also got to remember your profile is your gateway to, um, is your gateway to opportunity. So make sure it's constantly updated. If you've got something to say, create a short post. People, people who post, they tend to get noticed more. So think about it as a short window and you've got to stand out from the crowd, right? To, to, to get these limited opportunities at businesses and agencies. What are you doing that's different to everybody else? Because ultimately it's an industry about standing out. You want your brand, the client wants you to create a campaign that makes their brand stand out from the competition, yeah. right? So you've got to stand out. Think about yourself again as a brand. You stand out from the competition. So what is your LinkedIn profile saying about you? List all your achievements. List maybe there's commentary about work you've seen online. Maybe when it's Super Bowl time, you could do your own critique about it. Yeah. Show that you know, show that you you really care, that you really are serious about about your career. And a good way to start is just to interact and like posts and maybe comment on posts. Absolutely. To post something on your own on LinkedIn, I get scared still. I'm sure a lot of people do that are, you know, we do these executive trainings on LinkedIn and you have to post, you have to post. Executives are hesitant sometimes on what to say, when to say it, if, how it'll get reacted to. So a good little break in to that is just to like, comment, uh, repost stuff so you don't have to put your... POV out there right away. It's a good little gateway. So and then you can start crafting little narratives um, and keeping your uh, network updated. Hey, new portfolio, my portfolio is done. Uh, or I just won this Young Lions Award. You would definitely want to post that. So keeping it in touch, in tune, and connecting with people on the side, having those conversations, Steve, I think it's, it's, it's great. You can, you can connect with anybody in the world in this industry with two clicks. Absolutely. Yeah. And, 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 when you, you know, the first thing I did when you contact me, you go on LinkedIn and you, you, you click who they're about. So if, if you've made the shortlist in an agency of recruiters, you know, put you on the shortlist, the hiring manager is going to probably look at your LinkedIn profile. So yeah. stand out. Don't be, don't let it be passive. I guess is what and I'm trying I, and to And I always had a little note too, when I connect like with you, I was like, Steve, like, uh, I have this podcast. So I'd love to have you on. We can talk about can. We can talk about all the stuff that you do. Whatever it was, it caught your attention. You accepted, and now you're on the show. As simple as that. It was also all that money you sent me, Gina, which really helped. Thank you. <laughs> I got a lot of it, Steve. <laughs> Definitely got a lot of it. So happy to to give it your way. <laughs> um, awesome, Steve. This has been great so far. Is there anything I should have asked you? I didn't ask you. You that you want to tell the world. Other than that. I think there's okay. a lot of, um, I think if you're working in the age, if you've managed to break in and you really want to see what great looks like, I mean, um, we have a platform called The Work, which has like 260,000 plus cam campaigns and stuff on there, right? So if you're, you know, when you join an agency, no doubt they'll have access to that. And, and it has all the talks from the last 10, 12 years, um, lots of reports. So it, again, when you, when you've, when you're working, when you're trying to break into sleep, read a lot, you know, look for different sources yes, of yeah. inspiration, right? At the end of the day. Um, but also there's, you know, there's wonderful organizations like Creative Ladder. They're based in the U S. Shout they out David Greiner, Deanna yes. Dorsey and Ryan Reynolds. Exactly. So again, brilliant organizations that, that are there, the associations as well, um, that exist, um, at the end of the day, um, this industry is only going to exist with talent coming into it. And so, you know, do your damnedest to get into the business because I think it's a wonderful, a wonderful um, business to be in and can be a very, can be a career that can take you all around the world, right? You see, you see people working all around this, all around the world, global. Doing networks. what they love. Exactly. And coming up with ideas for a living. It's not a bad life, is it? I, I kind of feel like I'm with my calling in life. It's not, it's not as bad. It can seem stressful when you're in the work, 
in, in, in the ground, in the root of it, in the thick of it, but you're thinking of an idea for a living and it's not bad. And I wanted to thank you, Steve, for coming on, sharing ways that can helps people think of ideas better for a living, for more money, for more, just for at more ease, really. Uh, it, and, and also pushing us to create better work too. I think there's a lot of bad, bad ads out there and you guys celebrate the best. And that's we something do, yeah. that we can do for yeah. those that are, aren't in the industry. They can enjoy some better ads. Right. And listen, right, we're always open. At, um, you know, hopefully, you know, people will take our advice and go, okay, who are these two on LinkedIn? I listen to the, po you know, find, mm -hmm. find us on LinkedIn, send a message and uh, you want to be involved. How do I be, get involved? What's coming up? Right. Ask those questions because. Should they connect um, with you directly or where should they yeah, go just, for all these reasons? LinkedIn, through LinkedIn, not a problem at all. Right. It's, it's, um, it's super important to, to keep, to build these networks as we talked about, right? So yep. um, anyone you connect with, anyone who comes into your school and does a tour, whatever, first thing you should be doing is, I want to find them on LinkedIn and then send them a note. Yep. I really enjoyed you coming in to speak to our class. I found it X, Y, and Z. And people people like that, people respond to that, right? So um, it, it, what is great about Can is that it's, um, Can Lion, the event, is really is a people, a people event. Mm -hmm. um, there's no suits, there's no, there's no, there's no ties. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of shorts. There's a lot of expensive trainers that, that the creatives wear, but ultimately it's, um, it's a work event, but in a, in a relaxed environment and, um, you can literally be sat next to, um, the CMO of one of the biggest brands in the world. And you wouldn't necessarily know it just to look at them. You, and everyone wants to talk in can, that's what's one of the best things about it. So if you get to go there hook me up and I will definitely come and find you and say hello. I'd love to see all of your listeners there. Thank you so much, Steve. I appreciate you. No worries. Thank you, Gina. Good work. Yep. Good work too. Have a good one. Thank you.